Welcome to this episode. My name is James Nganga, a senior research assistant working for ICPE. I'll take you around to beekeeping, management, inspection of hives, uh, introducing to you to different types of hives, their advantages and their disadvantages. At the same time, we'll also check on our colony management in both honeybees and stingrays bees. For honeybees, we have two types of hives. We have uh, this traditional log hive, and also we have this modern Langstroth hive. And both two types of hives, they have their advantages and their disadvantages. It's cheaper or it's affordable for a farmer to, ma to make his or her own log hive. But now when it comes to honey harvesting, honey quality is not uh, higher compared to the, from the Langstroth hive. Reason, when the bees get into this hive, they contaminate both honey and pollen and everything. And when it comes to harvesting, you find most of the farmers, they normally use their hand to remove the honey. So you find most of the honey is contaminated with brood and other stuff. When doing harvesting, you, 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 you kill a lot of bees. Although we train some farmers on how to do modification, they use a queen excluder, whereby one end is, is a brood, the other end is for honey. For Langstroth hive, this is what we call the bottom board, and the entrance is here. This is where bees normally comes in and out. From there, we have this chamber. This is a brood chamber with this kind of a size of a frame. It has some wires which are used to reinforce the comb when the bees construct the comb. So the, for this one, we call it a brood, brood chamber because this is where the queen is and worker bees and everything. So this is a, their breeding area. When they fill in this, other, this uh, brood chamber, we normally give them the queen excluder. This is called a queen excluder, whereby worker bees can pass through this hose and the queen cannot pass through. So what happens when you introduce it over here, you find now you've given your bees another space on top so that they can be able to store honey. And that space on top is this one. We call it honey super. So when it comes to harvesting, you always harvest from these ones. This is just a small frame which accommodates like 1.5 to 1.3 kilos of honey. So when it comes to harvesting, we always harvest from here. We don't harvest from the brood chamber. And that's why we always advise farmers Harvesting, you always harvest 70%. You leave 30% for your bees. Then we have this one, which is called the inner cover to regulate temperature in the hive. When it's too hot, you find the bees, they normally fan through this hose to keep their house cool. Then, apart from that one, we have now the top cover, which protects your, bee, your beehive from direct heat or direct rains. For the rogue hive, in some areas, depending with the, the size of the rogue you are using, you can, also, you can harvest like 20 kilos, and for the Langstroth, you can also harvest like 20 kilos, 15 kilos, so depending. But also for the bees' survival in most areas, especially in dry areas, we find that log hive bees, they tend to survive better than this other one. So for the Langstroth, if you are keeping them in dry areas, you have to make sure you provide your bees with shade. Otherwise, if you let them get direct heat, they'll keep on abscoding. We also have different types of hives like the Kenyan top bar. We have also mud hives, depending with what farmer can afford. For the honeybees, you normally select an apiary. And an apiary is a place where you keep your beehives. There are some factors you consider when you are sighting an apiary. Number one, you make sure the vegetation is viable for the bees, because there are some areas where you can keep the bees and they don't get enough food. Secondary, when you are setting an apiary, you make sure you, there is a water source. Water is very important for the bees to dilute their food. Thirdly, you also have to check on uh, the shade provision, because if you put your hives to direct heat, it will also cause another problem. And also the kind of farming taking place around. There are some people who normally use a lot of pesticides, and pesticides is so hazardous to uh, your honeybees, so you can't, keep, you can't do beekeeping to somewhere they are using a lot of pesticides. Welcome to our apiary. And our apiary has about 15 hives. And uh, most of them, they are Langstroth hives. And as you can see, 
for apiary identification location you have to make sure your bees are well provided with shade and also the kind of stands you are using depends a lot because there are some areas you find ant invasion so that's why we are using this metallic stand and it has a kind of a tray here where we normally put some used oil to minimize the infestation on, of ants getting into the hive next what we do we can open some of the hives and be able to check how the colony looks like and also to monitor the other pests in the hive so what we do when we are working on these bees you make sure you smoke the entrance to break the communication then you open gently like this slowly make sure you don't bang you press the stand there this is called an inner cover to regulate temperature in the hive and as you can see these are some of the bees all these are worker bees and you can see they are trying to guide to guard their hive then for a colony you make sure you lift up slowly by slowly this is how they construct their comb and as you can see this is a comb with some honey this is honey but this honey belongs to these bees because it's on the roa chamber so this is their own food you make sure you don't harvest from here but you keep on checking this is a brood this is how they construct and how, how they reproduce this is a brood whereby the young bees will emerge from there at the same time as you can see here these are some queen cells this is an indication this colony is about to do splitting so what we normally do you make sure you destroy these swarm cells so you let only one to survive it's like the colony doesn't have a queen eh? in the bees colony we have father mother and children that is queen worker in the drones so this is how the colony looks like eh? and this is how they do the construction of their nest storage of food breeding reproduction it all takes place here but now that is on the row chamber the row box once the, the bees feed this row box we give them the upper box for honey harvesting but the lower chamber you leave for your bees to survive because they don't store honey for human consumption they normally store honey for themselves this one is honey but it's mixed with brood eh? meaning that the queen is over here so this honey for a professional beekeeper you are not supposed to harvest from here this one you leave it for your bees honey which is uh, ripe it should be capped like this this is an indication of the honey which is not really ripe because it should be capped three quarter that's a, when it's capped three quarter that honey is ready for harvesting we normally have the advantage of langstroth hive you just shake off the bees then this one you take it to the centrifugal machine for the honey to come out then from there you bring back the frame you save energy for your bees they'll continue with honey storage in most cases you find farmers harvest all they don't leave 30 percent for their bees so what happens after harvesting you find the bees feel more disturbed then they abscond they leave the hive completely but with this one if you harvest and leave some food for them your bees will continue to gather more and more food so it's advisable for a farmer to make sure even if there is no honey you just leave your bees basically here you are able to learn about honey bees how you are supposed to manage the colony how you are supposed to maintain your apiary next we'll go to the stingrays bees.